seats. You can, you can take your seats. Oh, awesome. Having some fun tonight in church. Oh, great stuff. Hey, um, it's so good. So good to be together. And uh, last summer, I uh, started a series of messages which were meant to be three parts on Sunday nights. We called it back then the church I see, but I only did two because I ended up in hospital. And um, so I thought tonight I'd do the last part of the church I see. And kind of some of the scriptures that we've been using um, to kind of kick off these messages, each message is Luke chapter 10, verse 27 to 28, where somebody comes to Jesus, a guy comes to Jesus and says, what must I do to get eternal life? And uh, Jesus asks him to, you know, what, does the, what do you think? Goes back at him and says, well, you tell me what you think you have to do. And the guy says this, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus replies to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. Do this, and you will live. You know, we've got some slogans, haven't we, at Icon Church? And we got the slogan, A Whole Another Level. We got the slogan from the Bible, from Corinthians, that talks about faith, hope, and love. We have liked to use that. We've got the slogan, Blue Parking is double parking. We've not heard that one for a new one. We need to think of a slogan for recycle. Recycling cups, don't we? We've got the phrase that Brian Houston says, but we kind of use a lot, the best is yet to come. Another one of his phrases is, you never come second by putting God first. We like to say, you're only a stranger once. We have these signs on our screens and on our entrance, welcome home. Because we really believe that Icon Church can be a home for thousands of people. We also love to say, you belong here. You belong here. We love that slogan. On Vision Sunday, which is two weeks away, May the, March the 4th, we're going to create another slogan. And it's going to be the theme for the whole year. I'll talk about it on Vision Sunday. And I'll talk about how that's going to be our theme for the year. Then I'll do a series of three messages Um, later on in the year, and then it will be the theme also for our Pulse Conference. So our theme, it will go through the whole of our year, and I believe it will become another slogan in the life of our church. Uh, But one of my favorites is a simple one that we used to have on our website like a few years ago, and it was simply this, love God, love people, love life. And when I did this series, you know, the first message was love God. The second message was love people, but I never got to the third message, which was love life. You know, the purpose of a slogan is to give some imagery that makes a promise or encourages us to live in a certain way. You know, the the world, uh, society uses slogans, doesn't it, all the time. KFC, who, by the way, have been shut over the last weekend, many of them, because the They've got a new delivery company. Oh, I shouldn't say this in public, should I? They've got a new delivery company who haven't got chicken to the restaurants, and so they've had to close restaurants. But anyway, that's that's still a fine establishment. KFC, they have a slogan. What's their slogan? Finger licking good. Nike have a slogan. Just do it. Here are some more uh, slogans. Apple. Think different. L'Oreal. Because you're worth it. Panasonic, ideas for life. John Lewis, never knowingly undersold. Red Bull. Yeah, Subway. Eat fresh. Eat fresh. Oh. Do you know that's the first demon we've had in church for a while, isn't it? That's wonderful. Eat fresh. Yeah. Kellogg's Frosties. They're great. (laughs) <laughs> Jesus asks this guy, what do you think is the way to life? He asks for eternal life. Of course, he's not asking for life after death. He's asking, how do I live a life that I love? How do I live a life that I will truly love? And Jesus said, what do you think the answer is? What do you think the law and the prophets point to? How do they sum it up? And he says, you know, love God, 
and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says to him, yes, you've answered correctly. Now do this, and you will live. And so I'm talking tonight of how to live a life that I will love. How to live a life that I will love. Let's do a bit of theology, like sketch theology on this board. Hopefully you'll see it on the screens. Maybe the camera people can zoom in. But maybe you've seen, you've seen this. It's very common illustration that here on this side we have God. And on this side we have me or you and me. And in the middle we have a problem. And the problem is sin. Anybody seen this before? It's called the bridge. And we try and bridge that gap between us and God. And we try all kinds of things. We can try religion. We can try good works. We can try all kinds of different things. But everything falls short of reaching God. But the good news is, is that God actually himself bridged that gap. He bridged that gap when his son died on a cross for us and embraced our sin. And grace means that you and I only have to walk across that bridge. We only have to accept Jesus and we can be reunited with God. It's a great illustration. It's an illustration that we can use to help people. You can be in a restaurant and draw that on a napkin and just talk to people and say, we try all kinds of things to get back to God, religion. Sometimes we think our nationality will get us back to God, but they all fall short. But the good news is God's done it. God's made the bridge in the person of Jesus. However, there's a better illustration. I've always got a better illustration because I like to be like Jesus who said, you've heard it said, but I say unto you. So you've seen it, the bridge, but I've made my own. And I'm going to show you. And it's this. It's a cross like this. And at the top of the cross is God. And there's self. And there's others. And there's the world. And the reason that's better is this. Because the gospel fixes those four relationships. The bridge talked about the relationship with God and how Jesus on the cross fixes that relationship between us and God. But you know, and most people think, if I can just fix the relationship with God, and some, most churches perhaps might preach, if we just fix the per- relationship with God, you'll have a life that you truly love. Then why are they miserable Christians? Anybody ever met a miserable Christian? Why are there weird Christians? Why are there unhappy Christians, if that were true? Because they've got a relationship with God, but they're still unhappy. It's because the gospel does more than just fix that relationship with God. It fixes our relationship with ourself. And it fixes our relationship with others. And it fixes our relationship with the world. The gospel fixes those relationships in four directions. And to live a life that you will truly love, we need all of those relationships fixed by God. We need to know God. That's the first thing. We need to have that relationship fixed. We need to know God. But also we need to find freedom. And that's these relationships here. Because most people have a bad relationship with themselves or broken relationship with themselves and with others. And that's where we find freedom. Becoming a disciple of Jesus means that God not just forgives us, but he works on us so that we can become free people, free spirited people in right relationship with him, in right relationship with ourselves, and right relationship with our others. So we need to know God. We need to fight. This is good theology tonight. I, I, feel, I feel like I could be teaching Bible college students today. And, um, and we, need to, we need to know God. We need to find freedom. But you know what else we need to do? We need to discover purpose. And that's this relationship with the world. And to live the life you truly love will never happen unless all those three are fulfilled. Great. I'm going to flip this back over because, oh, you want another look? There you go. Because I don't want to give away all my secrets. 
When Jesus preached, he said, the kingdom of God is amongst you. The kingdom of God is here, which means God has come to be king. It's not just about a relationship. God wants to rule all those aspects. To live the life you truly love. We'll need our relationship restored in all fine four directions, starting with himself, but starting also with the world. And so I want to talk a little bit about that relationship with the world, about that relationship of discovering purpose. And, and, and I'm not going deep tonight. We've had the deep theology already. But I just want to give two simple thoughts tonight. Because to love God is obvious to us. We need our relationship with God is obvious. We need to love God. And often that's the only string to our bow. It's, we feel it's the only thing that matters. To love uh, people seems obvious. Love your neighbor as yourself. But often we miss out the self part. That you and I are in a relationship with ourself and that needs to be a good one. And we need to find freedom, not just in our relationship with others, but we need to find freedom in our relationship with ourselves and the people of God, the church. You can only find that in community. You can't find that in your bedroom. You actually can only find it with other people. You see, because the Bible says to us, you know, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. But then it says in James, confess your faults to one another that you may be healed. You see, you get forgiveness from God, but you get healing from other people. Do you know, this is great theology tonight. You know, you get forgiveness from God, but you get healing when you're in right relationship with other people. You'll never live a life you truly love unless you find freedom. But also we have to discover purpose. We, you know, the biggest question, I think, in the human heart is the question, why? Why? Why are we here? Why all this? Gavin gave some incredible statistics this morning about how far we're spinning. You know, he, he said it's amazing. It's a miracle that we can stand, you know, and, and stand solidly. And, and because we're spinning at such a speed, and then the earth is moving at such a speed, and our solar system is moving at such a speed. And he gave all these statistics that I can't remember and I thought, that's why I feel dizzy. <laughs> it, is, it is not my medication. <laughs> I feel dizzy because we're spinning. We're traveling through space at how many million, thousand, billion miles an hour, whatever it was. Anyway, let me just give you two thoughts tonight just about living the life you will truly love and towards discovering purpose. The first is this. What first thought is something I want you to know. The second thought is something I want you to do. Know this, that calling is bigger than church ministry. Yeah. Calling is bigger than church ministry. If all calling was, was church ministry, then very few people could ever live a life they truly love. But, you know, each and every one of us are born with a sense of purpose and a desire to fulfill a purpose in our life. I was lecturing, not on this subject, but I was lecturing this week um, in, a, in a college. And there's a couple there called Ed and Sarah. They happen to be married, but they were actually sat separate in this class. And they both responded to the lecture. And I was talking about some theology called the renewal of all things. And how that God's ultimate aim is not just to forgive us, but God's ultimate aim is to put right everything that went wrong, including the world, including the universe, the renewal of all things. I was talking about how the gospel is for all of life and that you can be called into a, all kinds of areas of life. And uh, I, the first session, after the first session, Ed came up to me and Ed said, I, I, today I feel like I've been set free because I own a fashion business. And he said, but I put my fashion business on hold because I thought I needed to do that to, to, you know, to study, to study theology. And I probably thought that I would never pick it up again. But today I've had a revelation that I can serve God in that fashion yeah. business. I don't have to give it up to serve God. I can serve God through it and I can bring the kingdom because God wants people to have good clothes. Yeah. And I said, you're so right, Ed. And I said, I said this to him. I said, listen, let me tell you. That might not be the only thing you do in your life. 
But if it was, if all you did in your life, that God may have other things for you, but if all you did in your life was run that fashion business, make the best clothes that you can make, what you do is as important as what I do. It's just as important because calling is bigger than just church ministry. I love church ministry. I love doing what I've done. I won't want to do anything else. There are days it ticks me off and, you know, and I have to say, you know, sometimes there's a lot of them. But anyway, but, but I love what I do. But I want to say this, that you, you could be called into some other sphere of service, some other sphere of work, some other sphere of life. And that is just as important as anything else. After the second session, I, I, I just was brave. And I don't normally do this with the students, you know, because, like, they, they can be clever, you know, clever, clever dicks sometimes. But anyway, <laughs> and, and using that phrase in that the sense of people being cheeky, if you know what I mean. And I, and I just said, what spoke to you? Did anything speak to you in these two sessions? His wife, who was at the head, was sat at the front. She was sat at the back. She said, she said, this spoke to me so much today and set me free today because I'm a professional dancer. And I thought I would have to give dancing up to serve God. But it spoke to me today because I realized, and she said, that's been such a pain for me. Because, and it's been such a struggle for me because I love dancing and I love dancing with all my heart. And you've told me I love it with all my heart because that's how God wired me. And she says, that has set me free today because I realize I've wrestled with it. I've struggled with it. But I realized I can serve God in that space. I can love God and bring his kingdom in that space. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 9 says this, that he saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Jesus Christ before the beginning in time. He saved us and called us to a holy life. And whether you serve God in the area of church or business, arts and entertainment, family and society, government, education or media, the kingdom of heaven can come into those areas. You can serve God. You can have a good relationship with this world. They, there are seven, those are the seven areas of influence. And you'll find yourself in one or more of those spheres in your life. And God has placed you there to bring influence, to bring good, to be salt and light. Calling is bigger than church ministry. That's the first thing. I want you to realize that. I want you to know that. I never want you to doubt it. I never want you to disbelieve it. I never want you to say, yeah, but, you know, kind of real calling is if you're, no, no. You can be just as called to love your family, to lead your family, to serve society in some way, and to, to serve in business and make business great, or whatever it is, wherever you are. And then the second thing is do this, lean in more than ever, lean in more than ever, Jesus uh, said to the guy who asked him, how do I get eternal life or how do I live a life that I would love, which is the question he was really asking. He said to him this, he said, how, what do you think? And the guy said, well, love God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself, love God and love people. And Jesus said, yes, do this and you will live a life that you will love. Do this and you will live a life that you will love. Jesus was telling him, that when you and I lean in to the kingdom of God, we actually can resonate with God's purposes and God's will. And we can find God's purpose and God's will. Let's think about that word resonate or the idea of resonance before. And I know Nathan Blood has done something on this before here. But I found this um, explanation for resonate. An external force that drives another system to oscillate with greater amplitude at specific frequencies. And we all understand that, don't we? There's some big words, some big ideas, but it's pretty simple that there's one sound or one set of waves that when they set going, impact another object and, and the same frequency and that begins to move and that begins to oscillate with greater measure on that. It's why that some uh, singers can smash a glass with their voice. 
because the set of waves, the set of sound waves, actually begin to resonate with the glass and the, mo and the molecules, and the stuff of the glass begins to shake and move until it cracks, because it oscillates. It's why if I had two tuning forks and I hit tuning fork A, tuning fork B would begin to resonate at the same sound, and I could close tuning fork A, but you would still begin to hear tuning fork B. It was why on our very first Pulse conference, we had this tag. It was always there. Yeah. Now it's here. Because there's this God, this energy, this life in the universe, this person of God. And there's this sound that resonates. There's this kingdom that resonates. And it resonates with something in you. And it resonates with something in me. It's an external force that resonates with us. And it causes us to resonate at a greater amplitude. It causes us to resonate and move at a greater measure. So if you want to live a life that you really love, you need to get in sync with God and his kingdom and lean in more than ever, But because that, that will cause you to move and grow and flourish with greater, uh, with greater amplitude than ever before. It's an external force that has an impact upon us. It's God's kingdom that resonates and is always resonates. And when you and I lean in, when you and I lean in, it, re it sends a response in and through us and a transformation. Let me show you a couple of verses just where Jesus talks about this. First John 10 and verse 27. Um, he says this, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. My sheep listen to my voice. And what I say resonates within them. And they follow me. My sheep listen to my voice. And something resonates within them. And they say, that's the kind of people we want to be. And they follow me. Let's go back to John chapter 1. <clears throat> a few chapters earlier where Jesus is calling his first disciples. And this is in several of the Gospels, but I thought I'd just use these verses from John chapter 1, verses 35 to 39, and then verse 43. It said, the next day, John was there again with two of his disciples, John and two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, John said, look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. John must have thought, what did I do wrong? They were following me. But when, as soon as John said, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, they leave John and they begin to follow Jesus because the message resonated within them. I believe there's something in the soul of every human being that resonates with the kingdom of God. And they began to follow Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw these two disciples and said, what do you want? And they said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Come, he said. And you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying. And they spent the day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. And then they followed him for three and a half years. What about verse 43? The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said, follow me. My sheep, hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Have you noticed Jesus didn't have a major marketing strategy to reach people? You never see Jesus in a business meeting saying, how are we going to reach more people, boys? How many posters do we need to put, put up to get some more people in church? Do you know why he never did that? He said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Something resonates within them. And they follow. Now, Jesus wanted to reach more people because he said to his disciples, now we need to go to the other towns and the other cities also because there's people there who need to hear this message and something needs to kick off inside of them so that they too will begin to follow me. Jesus was confident in who he was and he was confident that when he spoke, it would resonate with the people and they would follow him. 
Last week at our New People's Lunch here in Chesterfield, somebody asked this question at the end of the, um, the lunch, and we opened up for Q&A, and they said this, why did you build a church like this? And then they went on and said, which is amazing, by the way. I'm glad they added that last bit. <laughs> why did you build a church like this, which is amazing, by the way? And I answered it really well. <laughs> and I'll tell you how I answered it. I said like this, when I go to a concert, there's usually around 10,000 in that place, 10,000 people. Some concerts where I've been to see Coldplay or people like that, there's been 50,000 people in that place. That means there's a lot of people like what I like. And I realized one day, if I could build a church I really, really love, there are thousands of people who like what I like, and they might really, really love it also. It's not, it's not that difficult. Now, not everybody is going to like what I like. Not everybody would want to go to the concerts I go to. Not everybody is going to like the kind of church that I like and I love and I really, really love. But there are thousands of people that will. There are thousands of people that will, and that was my answer. So here's what I'm saying to us tonight. I want you to know this, that, <clears throat> that ministry... Is far more than just church ministry. But also I want you to lean in to God like never before. Then resonate. Because that brings out the best of you. That brings out the best of you. And I want you to understand this. It's on you. It's on you. You might be saying, God, would you do something in my life? But Jesus said this. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow. Who acts? Jesus speaks, he acts, he, he sends out the signal, but we follow. Yeah. We resonate. It's on us. You see, you might say that Jesus didn't really have time for the Pharisees. That's because he knew his message and his mission wasn't resonating with them. Yeah. Their religion was so inbred that they couldn't respond and they couldn't resonate. They, he knew that they were never leaning in. But there were some Pharisees who weren't totally bound by religion that would lean in. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. The most famous Pharisee that leaned in was Saul of Tarsus, who was a Pharisee who wanted to destroy the church. But he heard the voice of Jesus one day. And something, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? Something began to resonate within him. And he began to follow. And he became the greatest leader of the church in the New Testament. A couple of few other people. Herod had a servant called Chuzza, and he and his wife leaned in, and they paid all Jesus' bills. Chuzza and Joanna, I love them. Later on in the New Testament, we read even about members of Caesar's household who are following Jesus while Caesar is killing Christians. At the same moment that, that a member of their family who's in government is persecuting and destroying Christians, there are members in the same household who were resonating the message of the kingdom, and they are following Jesus. I want you and I to lean in more than ever. I wonder if the band can come back because I'm finishing right now. I want us to lean in more than ever. Here's a few things we can lean into more than ever because it's on us. Hello? It's on us to lean in. It's on us to respond. I want us to lean into human flourishing, helping people live their best life. I want us to lean in. I want us to lean into seeing uh, people who are far away from God find him. When was the last time you invited somebody to church? A friend to church? When was the last time? It was too long. I'm speaking to myself. It was too long. I want us to lean in. It really really matters I want us to lean in I don't want us just to be a comfortable safe church thinks it's got all together I don't want us to be a cool church that thinks it's got all together I want us to care about people who don't know Jesus and I want us to lean in more than ever and I want something to resonate within us
need to pray for my friends. I need to pray for my family. I need to invite, invite, invite. I need to invest. I need to have meals. I need to do that. I want us to lean into human flourish. I want us to lean into building church. We are church builders. We're not church critics. We're not church killers. We are church builders. I want us to lean into building church. We love one another. That's who we are. We love one another. You know, we, we, we'll wind each other up from time to time. We'll rub each other up the wrong way from time to time. But we are church builders. That's who we are. That's who we are. I want you to resonate with that. I want you to lean into that more than ever. When people criticize like the church, I want you to look at them and think, when did he learn Polish? Because I don't understand that. Oh, you've not got it yet. Like, when did she learn French? Because I can't speak French. So, like, she's talking French. She's talking crazy because I don't speak like that. I don't understand that critical language. You, you look really worried there. Yeah, you're confused. Yeah, you don't speak French. I'll explain it to you afterwards. Oh, just overthinking it a little bit there. All right. I want us to lean in to empowering people to discover their purpose, their gift, their ability to believe and mine for gold in people. I want us to lean into the value of God's house and God's people. This isn't a, this isn't a joke. What we're about. This is not. This is this this is this is incredible. We get to do this. This is incredible. And I want us to lean in. I want us to lean in to being creative, generous, positive, empowering, and passionate. And it's on you. And it's on me. Lean in. Do you know I thought about this phrase, and I'm finishing with this phrase. Jesus is holding nothing back. Jesus is holding nothing back. If we will lean in, his promise, the way he speaks, the way he teaches, if we will lean in, we'll see God do far more than we can ask or imagine. So I'm sold. I want to lean in. We all want that. And Jesus said, if you do this to that young man, if you can love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, if you can love others, your neighbor as yourself, you can do that, then you will live a life that you will love. Why don't we stand and pray and, and then the band can lead us in some worship as we lean in and respond tonight because that's what I want us to do. I want us to lean in and respond. I want us to believe for our best year yet. As a church, I want us to believe for that in our families as individuals. I want us to decide, I'm making Icon Church my home. I'm a church builder. I want us to make that decision today. I'm, I'm going to reach some people this year. I'm going to have some friends that come with me to church this year. I want us to lean in and believe and, and expect and anticipate. And just believe that. I want you to say I'm leaning in. Maybe you've grown, maybe you've grown cold. It's on you. Yeah. It's on you. Yeah. Lean in. You see, on you, lean in. Lean in. All you gotta do is lean in. Yeah. Lean in. Our Father who's in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today everything we need, our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us, Father God, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever and ever. And everybody said, come on, let's worship God.